From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman coming to you from our Boston area studio here for a Cube Conversation. Really like when we can dig in to help some of the nonprofits in our industry. Going to be talking about you know training, uh, helping other people lift up their careers. Happy to welcome to the program first time guest Jerome Hardaway. He is the founder of Vets Who Code. Uh, coming to us uh, down from Nashville, J Jerome. I, I seem to remember a time where I was able to travel. Uh, did some lovely hiking. Even saw a bear uh, last time I was down in Nashville. Uh, thank, thanks so much for joining us. Roger that. Thank you. Uh, funny story. I saw a cow on the loose while driving on the highway yesterday. So not much has changed. Uh, thank you guys for having me. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is a little bit of strange times here in the COVID area. I live kind of suburban Massachusetts area. One of my neighbors did report a, a small bear in the area. I'm definitely seeing more than just the usual what kind of wild turkeys and the like uh, that we get up in New England. Uh, but let, let's talk about Vets Who Code. So, you know, you're the founder. Uh, the, the name doesn't leave uh, you know much up for uh, us to guess what you do, but you know, to tell us a little bit as to uh, the, the inspiration and the goals of, uh, of, of your organization. Roger that. Uh, Vetsu Code is the first veteran founded, operated, and led uh, remote 501c3 that focuses on training veterans regardless where they are in modern and bleeding edge uh, technologies. Our stack right now, uh, I would say is focused more towards front end DevOps with a lot of serverless uh, technologies being built in. And, um, you know, that's pretty much all what, exactly what we do. Well, awesome. Been, been, been loving digging into the, the serverless ecosystem the last few years. Uh, definitely an exciting area. Help us understand a little bit, uh, you know, what, wh who comes and joins this? What skill set do they have to have coming in? Uh, and, you know, explain a little bit the programs that they can offer, that they can be part of. Yeah, cool. Uh, so we run Vetsuko like a mixture between a um, tech company or tech nonprofit, I guess, uh, using those practices while also using military practices as well. And the people that come in are veterans and military spouses. And we try to use what we call um, a pattern matching practice of showcasing like, hey, you know, these are the things we do in the military. This is how it translates to the uh, tech side. Like, you know, our sit reps is what you guys would call stand up. Uh, Kanban is what we would call like systems checks and frag orders, op, um, op orders, things like that. Um, or, you know, uh, our SOPs. So what we turn around, we just train them uh, retrain them so that way they can understand the lingo, understand how things, how you code, move, and communicate, and make sure that these guys and girls, they know um, how to work as JavaScript engineers in a serverless community. Um, as of right now, we've helped 252 veterans in 37 states get jobs. Uh, our social economic impact's been, I think it's at 17.6 million right now. So, and all from the, you know, the comfort of their homes. I think that's like the cool, and free. And those are like the coolest things that we've been able to do. Well, that, that, that's fascinating. Jerome, I, I heard something that you've talked about, you know, leveraging uh, the, the, the military uh, organizational styles. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, we, there's in, in the coding world, a lot of times uh, we talk about Conway's law, uh, which is that the code will end up resembling the, the look of the organization. And you talk about DevOps. DevOps is all about, you know, various organizations collaborating and working together. Uh, it seems a little bit different from what I would think of, of you know, traditional military uh, command and control. So is that anything you've given any thought to? Is there some of the organizational uh, pieces that you need to talk to people about moving into these environments compared to what uh, they might have had in the military? Negative. I think the biggest misconception that we have is that people, when they're talking about how the military moves, they're thinking of the military of yesteryear, of 20, 30, 40 years ago. They're not thinking of global war on terrorism veterans and how we move and things like that. We ha we understand distributed teams. We understand because uh, we call, I mean, that's what we've done in uh, CENTAF and CENCOM in Iraq and Afghanistan. So we under like we are already doing a lot of this stuff. We're just, you know, naming it different. So that's part of the thing that, you know, we have as an advantage uh, as at, at Vetsu Code, because all the people who are educators, they're veterans who learn how to code and they've been working in the industry 
and they know, um, and so when they're teaching, they know the entire process that a veteran is going to go through. So like that's how you no, know, we focus on things, and so the organizational structure for us first term to second term veterans is pretty normal if you're coming out within the last, you know, heck, ten years. <laughs> Yeah, uh, absolutely. That, that That's wonderful. And I, I've had the opportunity to work to, with plenty of people that had come from the military, very successful uh, in the tech industry, uh, definitely tend to be uh, you know, hard workers uh, and engaged in what they're, they're doing. Uh, I'm curious, you, you talk about being able to do this remotely uh, and that it is free. What's the impact of uh, the, the current global pandemic, uh, you know, everything that's happening here in 2020, uh, been, been on uh, w what you're doing and your resources? Of the impact, unfortunately, I mean, not unfortunately, but fortunately, has been nothing but positive. Uh, it's been crazy. We've gotten more applications. We have, you know, people are seeing that during, you know, I was the crazy person in the room when in 2014, when I was saying nonprofits should move to remote first protocol. So that way uh, they could have greater impact for less with less uh, financial resources. And back then I was the like, what are you talking about? This is what we've always done. Well, now um, everybody was scrambling to try to figure out how to help people without being in the same room with them. We were like, oh, OK, it's Tuesday. So we've gotten an influx of people applying and plug influx of people uh, sending me uh, trying to get into our next cohort in August. Uh, it's just you know, the biggest thing that has happened uh, for Vetsu Code is just, like, it's been a really positive experience for us, which is really weird to say. Um, but I think that's, a, you know, my doomsday Murphy's Law style of preparing. Like, I, I assume that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So I try to, you know, prepare for that. So being um, open source, being serverless, being uh, having everything in a manner to where, in case I was out of the pot, out of the situation, other people could operate. Having this distributed team, so there are other leaders that can take over and do things. It's all stuff that you know. I guess like I got from the military, so <laughs> and you know we were all you know we were prepared because there was absolutely zero pivot for us. If anything, there's been more resources. We've been able to dive deeper in more subjects because people have had more time. Like uh, you know we did we can dive deeper in AWS. We started a lunch and learn um, every two weeks. We actually have a lunch and learn next week with uh, Dr. Lee Johnson, and she's going to be talking. We open that to like all juniors and entry level devs uh, developers, uh, regardless of whether you're a veteran. Or not. We just throw it on Twitter and let them get in. And um, her that focus will be on tech ethics. Uh, like we all know, right now we've been leading the charge on trying to make sure people um, are supercharging their skills during this time frame. So that's what you know. It's been very um, positive. I've been working with Mashing Magazine, Front End Masters. It makes it. It's been awesome. Well, that, that, that's wonderful. Wish everyone uh, ha had the mindset coming into 2020 because it does seem that anything that could go wrong has. <laughs> um, <laughs> curious, you know, once people have uh, skilled up and they, they've gone through the program, uh, what connections do you have with the industry? How do you help with job placement and, and that sort of activity? And that is the most asked question because that is the thing that people expect because of code schools. Because of our educational pro protocols, we don't really need that issue uh, because our veterans Veterans are skilled enough to where to, you know, hiring managers know our the quality that we produce. Um, I live in Nashville and I've only been able to place one veteran that I've trained locally in the community because uh, fame companies have snatched up every other veteran I've ever trained in the community. Um, so things like that, you know, it's not a problem because, you know, 80, usually 80 percent of our veterans have jobs before they even uh, graduate. So you're literally picking on picking people who, you know, they can they know they have the potential to get at big companies if they put the work in. And, you know, it, you know it's just as they come, we actually have people. I think a company reached out to me yesterday and I was like, I don't even have people for you. Like they already have jobs <laughs> or um, I'm in a situation now where all my senior devs are looking for fame companies because uh, that's one of the things we do is that we support our veterans from reentry to retirement. 
So we're not like other code schools where they only focus on that 30 to 60 to 90 days. So that first job, our veterans, they keep coming back to reskill, um, get more skills, come up to lunch and learns, come to our Slack side chats to, you know, become better programmers. And once they're so we've help several of our programmers go from entry level dev to senior dev um, from absolutely zero experience. And it's a, I think that's the most rewarding thing when you see a person who um, they came in knowing nothing. And then three years later, like after the cohorts, they, they got their job and then they come back after they got their job because they want to get more skills and they get them, they get another job and then they come back. And the next thing you know, you know, uh, like my, my favorite, one of my favorites, Schuster, he starts at a local uh, web shop, at web dev shop in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, and then next thing you know, oh, he's in Am he's at Amazon three years later. And you're like, oh, wow, we did that. That's awesome. So <laughs> like that's the um, like that's the path that we do. And it's, it's awesome. Uh, I, I'm curious, uh, d d are there certain skill sets that you see in more need than, than, than other? And I'm also curious, uh, d d do you recommend or do you help people along with certain certifications, thinking you know, the cloud certifications definitely have been on, on the rise the last couple of years? I feel like the cloud certif the cert cloud certifications have been on the rise because it's expensive to like test for that stuff. Like if a person messes up, unless you have like a very a dedicated environment to where they can met can't mess up, they can cost you a lot of money, right? So you want that cert, right? But for us, it's been, um, we just focus on what we like to call front-end DevOps. We focus on uh, Jamstack, which is JavaScript APIs and markup, uh, also along with a lot of serverless. So we're using uh, AWS, we're using, uh, so they're, they're learning Lambda fact functions, all this stuff. We're using a query language called GraphQL. Uh, we're using Apollo with that query language. Uh, we're using some Node, React, Gatsby, um, and a lot of third party APIs to do like a lot of heavy lifting because we believe that the deeper dive that a person has in a language and being able to manipulate and utilize APIs that they can, um, the, the better they will be. Right. So, in a, you know, same way that colleges do it, but a more modern take like colleges, you know, they give you the most painful language to learn, which is usually like C, right, where you have to make everything a very low level language and then you're going through this process of building and because of that, other languages are easier because you felt the pain points. We do the same thing, but with JavaScript because it's the most accessible, uh, painful language on earth. Like that's what I called it with Wire Magazine last year anyway. <laughs> So, J Jerome, you've you've laid out how you're well organized, you're you're lean and financially, uh, you know, making sure that things are done responsibly. W want to give you the opportunity though. What, what's the call to action? Vetsu code, you know, are you looking for more people to participate? Is it sponsorships? Uh, where where can the community uh, look look to engage? Roger that. We are looking for um, two things. One, we're always looking for people to like to help support us. We're on open source. We're on GitHub sponsors. Like the people who we were up, we're open source, but the people who do most of our tickets are the students themselves. So that's one of the best things about us. Like being, there's no better move, uh, feeling than having something in production that works, right? That actually does something, right? Like, oh, this actually helps people, right? So we help have our veterans like actually pull tickets and do things like that. But we also, um, we build, we're building out teams that they are on all the time as well. We have our new tutorials team where veterans, they literally build um, um, front uh, facing tutorials for people on the outside. So that way they can learn um, little like skills is we also have podcast team and they're always podcasting always interviewing uh, people within the community from our mentors to our students to our alumni and so just you know let's do our podcast on spotify that's who codes the best code podcast and uh you know sponsor us on github Wonderful. Jerome, I uh, want to give you the final word. Uh, you're, you're very passionate. You've got a lot of interest. In, loved hearing about uh, you know, some of the, the, the skill sets that you're helping others with. What's exciting you these days? What, what, what kind of things are, are you digging into you know, beyond Vetu code? Oh man, everything serverless, dude. Like as a front end, as a person who was full stack and moved to front end, this has never been a more exciting uh, time to learn how to code because there's so many serverless technologies and it's leveling the, the playing field for front end engineers um, with just knowing a little bit of like server side code and 
uh, having DevOps skills and being able to work in a CLI, like you can do like uh, Jamstack and, then, and the people who are using it, like you have Nike, you have governments. Uh, it's just, it's such an exciting time to be a front end. So I'm just like, you know, and you, just seeing also how people are like really turning towards wanting uh, their data more open source. So that's another thing that's like really exciting for me. Like I've never been a person that, you know, was very uh, highbrow when it came to talking about code. I felt like that, that was kind of boring, but seeing like how, when it comes to like how code is actually helping normal, like average everyday people and how that, you know, the, culture as a whole is starting to get more hip to how you know apis like are running the world and how tech is um being leveraged for and against them it, you know i am like on fire with these conversations so and, like i try to contain it because i don't want to scare anyone on, on tv but like we could talk like i talk for hours of that stuff so, love it yeah. Well, Jerome, thank you so much for sharing with our community everything you're doing and, and, and a wonderful uh, activity, Vets Who Code. Definitely call out to the community, make sure, you know, check it out, support it if, if you can, uh, and uh, tie so much in, Jerome. I, I've got a regular series I do called Cloud Native Insights uh, that are poking at some of those uh, in areas that you were talking about, uh, serverless and some of the emerging areas. So, Jerome, thanks so much for joining. Pleasure having you on the program. Rush that. Thank you for having me. All right, be sure to check out thecube.net for all of the videos that we have, as well as siliconangle.com for the, the news and the write-ups of what we do. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching The Cube.